Hi, welcome to the session on uh, CMA part two, strategic financial management. Uh, in this session, we'll be discussing about financial markets. To raise a capital, a corporate takes the help of financial markets. Financial markets are the intermediaries which help the corporates to raise capital. They provide the information, how to raise the capital, that deal with the transactions of raising a capital. Also, they act as, inter as intermediaries between the investors and the corporates, uh, facilitating the issuance of various types of securities like shares, bonds, debentures, etc. These are all called as financial assets or financial instruments. The information about expected or return and various risks involved in a particular investment um, are provided by the financial markets. So we can say that the financial markets are organized, organized uh, offices to offer various services to the investors creating an opportunity creating an opportunity to invest in financial assets and also providing them the information about various risks of investments so the information which is provided by the you know uh, financial markets only to let the investors to know that what is the expected rate we can you know expect approximately and what are the risks involved in that but Financial markets never fix the prices of the instruments. The security prices are not fixed by the financial instruments. In fact, financial instrument, financial markets provide the information about the financial instruments, only the information, but never fix any prices of the shares, bonds, debentures and all. The price of these financial instruments in the secondary market is purely based on the supply and demand, not fixed by anyone else. Heavy demand, there will be high price. Low demand, there will be low price. So in the financial markets, market transactions, we can say that the three principal players use the information about securities for the exchange of you know, the investment. Borrowers, which are corporates, which raise capital. Savers, the savers, they have some savings, so they want to invest in a good investment where they get expect a good expected rate uh, with a less risk. Now, we can call them as lenders at the moment, but based on the instrument they buy, they become shareholders, bondholders, debenture holders, etc. So at the moment, they are all savers. Financial inter uh, institutions, the financial institutions act as an intermediaries between borrowers and savers, arranging these kind of services to, to introduce by introducing the savers to the borrowers. So the financial intermediaries can be uh, investment bankers, um, any other financial institutions who are engaged in introducing the savers to the borrowers, borrowers to the savers. So for these services, the financial intermediaries charge some amount either brokerage or underwriting fee or whatever so the financial markets are of two types here offered by the financial instruments capital market capital market refers to the long term you know instruments long term instruments where the corporates can raise their capital by issuing you know various uh, instruments like common stock preferred stock bonds etc whereas money market money market refers to the instruments which have a maturity period of one year or less so the instruments will become due within one year so the corporates will have to pay back the amount to the savers uh, which include like treasury bills, 
commercial paper, etc. For example, the commercial paper, the maximum duration for the repayment is 270 days. Therefore, we can say that commercial paper is a money market instrument, whereas common stock is forever. As long as the company exists, the shareholder can be an investor in the company. So uh, it is called capital market. The markets are broadly classified into money market or capital market. Now we are discussing about the capital markets. The role of the banks and financial institutions. Most of the banks, um, the primary activities include collecting savings from individuals and other corporates and lend this money, lend this money to various individuals and business at a high rate of interest. So savings may be offered at say 6% and the lending may be from like 12% to 18% depending upon the nature of the loan. So they make money by charging some rate of interest which is the difference between interest paid on savings and interest on lendings. But the other banks like investment banks they provide the other services in addition to this kind of accepting deposits and all. They are called as investment bankers. Investment bankers are specialized financial intermediaries. So the, these, these intermediaries help you know, the companies and other governments to raise money from public and other corporates. So in fact, we can say that the investment bankers provide advisory services to the clients on major transactions like issuance of shares, bonds, mergers, reconstruction, etc. So the banks purely engaged in just savings and lendings. We can call them as commercial banks. But the banks or financial institutions which are even engaged in you know, various other services, raising money uh, from public is called, you know, we can say the investment banker. The investment banker provides this kind of uh, services. And they charge some amount on the amount raised from the corporates, which is called a brokerage or underwriting fee. So they introduce, they introduce the savers to the uh, uh, corporates. Mutual funds. Mutual funds are you know, a pool of investment where you have different types of investments together in one particular investment. Say for example, a $3 million of investment is made, say for example, half a million in telecom industry, 1.5 million in infrastructure and a uh, 1 million in say for example uh, bio biotechnology so if one sector doesn't do well the other sector may perform well the other sector may perform well so overall the risk is reduced here so when we say that 3 million is invested in different sectors tomorrow this telecom sector uh, the investment from half a million to increase to say 0 0.6 600000 Infrastructure increased from 1.5 million to 1.7 million. But biotechnology decreased from 1 million to, say, for example, 900,000. So overall asset value is going to be now 6 plus 7, 13, 13 plus 1. So it is going to be 3.2. So 3 million investment in these various sectors has become now 3.2. So the net asset value increased from 3 million to 3.2 million. But if the entire 3 million is invested only in bio, would have lost, would have lost some amount because it is not performing well. The rest of the sectors perform well. It's compensated. So overall risk is reduced. And this net asset value is calculated on daily basis. The total value of the fund divided by the number of funds or units outstanding. In each of, of this fund, we have a different sector. 
different sector to reduce the risk. The securities, we, are say, we say securities, what are the securities? The securities are of two types, debt securities and equity securities. The debt securities are like bonds, debentures, uh, promissory notes like commercial paper, etc., bills. Yeah. Equity, equity is like preference shares and common shares. So the primary classification of security is into debt securities and equity securities. Most of these securities are negotiable, means can have the secondary market and they have their own features. Let's discuss in detail about different sectors, different uh, uh, instruments like debt securities and equity securities. But before that, who is selling these securities is an issue. Say there is a new company formed called ABC Limited, which required 5 million capital, 5 million dollar capital. So ABC Limited approaches XYZ Bank, an investment banker, helping raising these funds. So XYZ is a professional in raising capital for their clients. So 5 million now is now converted back into, say for example, 1 million into debt securities like bonds, etc. 2 million, say preference shares. And the remaining 2 million is, say for example, common shares. So the first time in the life of ABC Limited, securities are sold to public with the help of a financial intermediary, which is called investment banker. When the securities of a particular company, first time in its lifetime, are sold to a general public and other corporates, is called as primary market. Means what? Directly, the shares are sold from company to the investors across the globe, which is called primary market. So company sells directly to, to the investors. Of course, there is a media intermediary who will help transferring the shares to these guys. But secondary market means once these investors invested in the company, they want to sell the shares. There are some potential investors. They want to invest. Say in 2001, the company issued this share. 2003, a new potential investor wants to buy the shares. By the time this investor wants to sell. So there should be a market, there should be a market which would facilitate the buyers and sellers to meet and they make transactions without the involvement of the company. That is called secondary market. Secondary market is nothing but a market, a market where the buy and sale transactions take place, which were previously issued by a company. In the secondary market, the company is no more concerned about. Just will record who is the new shareholder who bought recently. That's it. So no intermediaries fix the prices, no companies fix the prices. It is purely based on the uh, interest of the buyer and seller. Company does not, does not receive any money in the secondary market. The corporate only receives money from the primary market. In the secondary market, the existing shareholder sells his share to a potential shareholder. Nowhere company receives money here in the secondary market. So secondary market is just nothing but selling of the uh, shares which were previously issued and it is done through uh, a medium called stock exchange. A stock exchange provides a kind of environment to introduce the existing shareholders to the potential shareholders. Example. New York Stock Exchange, 
which creates a medium wherein the existing shareholders can place their you know, offer to sell and a potential share shareholder can put an offer to buy. So they meet virtually to exchange these transactions. The financial securities here or financial instruments as we discussed that is a broad class classification of the securities into debt securities and equity securities. Debt securities. Debt securities are nothing but uh, borrowings of uh, money from uh, individuals and other corporates and this amount will be repaid in due course. ABC Limited issuing say a debt securities of $2 million. This $2 million is now broken down into smaller pieces of say $1,000. So each instrument value is a $1,000. So the ABC Limited is going to issue 2,000 bonds. 2,000 bonds of $1,000 each. So we mentioned very clearly that we are paying 6% interest per annum for a period of 5 years. We are issuing 2,000 bonds and each bond is of $1,000. Very clearly we can know from this sentence stating that the company is paying 6% per annum on $1,000 for a period of 5 years and the total number of bonds issued by the company is 2,000. So the bond, the bond has a maturity period of 5 years. So the company is going to pay $60 per year interest for 4 years. And 5th year along with interest of $60, the company pays even the principal as well because 5th year is a maturity period. So 4 years you will be paying interest. Fifth year you will be paying interest as well as principal. Right. So the duration of the bond here is 5 years. Any instrument which is uh, issued for a period greater than a year, more than a year is called capital instrument and it is traded in the stock exchanges. It is traded on the stock exchanges. It's a capital market. Whereas if this is issued for a period of say 90 days or 60 days or 180 days, it is traded in a money market and it is called as you know money market instrument, not the capital market instrument. And the, the investors here will get fixed amount of interest during the tenor of the bond. The companies will have to pay a fixed amount of interest irrespective of the profit of the company on the face value of the bond. The face value of the bond is $1000 in the example. So we will have to pay 6% on $1000. Sometimes, sometimes the companies may issue these bonds at a premium also $1050. When the company is in good demand, the company may sell its securities at a premium. Or if the company or economy in the country is not so good, so we are selling the bond at 980, which is called discount. Face value or par value is $1000. If issued at a price more than the face value, it is called a premium. If uh, the issue is less than the par value, it's called a discount. Whether you issue at a premium or discount, the interest is always calculated on par value. So the corporates will have to pay interest on the par value but not the issue value. Issue may be at a discount or a premium but still we calculate interest on par value. Equity securities. Equity securities are of two types here. Unlike debt securities, 
equity securities represent some sort of ownership of the corporation means they have some kind of rights which uh, or, or a debt, debt uh, holders do not have and these equity uh, uh, securities are of two types a preferred stock a common stock so preferred stock a common stock a preferent shareholders common shareholders common stock common stock is the owner it represents the ownership of the company the the, the, the investors who buy common stock of a company become ultimate owners of the company to the extent of the shares held by them so they they will have voting rights they can um, elect directors of the company they can be a part of you know various resolutions passed in the company and their in income will grow as the company grows so any capital appreciation is enjoyed by the common shareholders they are called as residual owners of the firm means what after the payment of interest taxes other dividends to the preference shareholders etc rest is distributed to the common shareholders they are the gainers they are the losers so entire amount after settling all the amounts will be distributed to or will be transferred to the common shareholders this is the reason why we can call them as the ultimate owners of the company here one important point is that no dividend is fixed to the common shareholder why because the residual income from the net income once you pay to the preference shareholders a fixed amount rest is common shareholders money so there is no fixed dividend to the common shareholders because the remaining amount belongs to the common shareholders and this is the reason why the common shareholders money or profit or net income is going to be reinvested a portion of the profit is going to be reinvested in a increasing in a starting a new projects uh, expansion of the business etc so the retained earnings will also belong to the common shareholders so from net income we pay to the preference shareholders first then uh, the remaining amount we decide whether to what extent is to be distributed to the common shareholders as dividend and what is to be retained in the business preferred shareholders as the name suggests here they have some kind of priority over uh, common shareholders they have priority in case of dividend means from net income you pay dividend to the preference shareholders first preference dividend and the next amount after paying the preference shareholders this amount belongs to common shareholders money so common shareholders will enjoy this profit at the same time suffer from this profit if this amount is very less you know that has to be shared by the common shareholders very heavy of course they are enjoying the heavy amounts in addition to the fixed dividend which is paid before payment to the common shareholders they have claim on assets means what when the company goes into liquidation when you compare the preference shareholders and common shareholders in the priority of the receiving the final payment in case of dissolution of the company preference shareholders will be given priority but least priority will be given to common shareholders because they are the ultimate owners so when the business is liquidated preference shareholders will have a priority over the assets and preference shareholders do not have any voting rights they cannot cast any votes in the meetings or uh, past so they cannot be part of any resolutions passed in the company because they are not the ultimate owners common shareholders are the ultimate owners of the company so here preferred stock and common stock Pre preferred stock and common stock preference shareholders have some priorities but ultimately the common shareholders will have you know the complete ownership of uh, the company but, uh, when you compare the common shareholders with the preference shareholders uh, preference shareholders will get fixed dividend 
and uh, common shareholders will get only residual amount. Preference shareholders will have a uh, priority in the case of bankruptcy or dissolution of the firm. And also, one important point is that whether you are a preference shareholder or common shareholder, both the shareholders will get dividend, which are not tax deductible expenses. So dividends are paid from the net profit after the payment of tax. So dividend paid to the shareholders, we do not have a benefit of tax deductibility. Whereas in the case of debt instruments, what we pay interest to the bondholders has tax deductibility. Let me show you a small sample here. Sales minus cost of goods sold in the New York income statement get gross profit. Gross profit minus operating expenses like admin selling and distribution, you get EBIT. Earnings before interest and taxes. Then you are paying interest to the bondholders, you get EBT. Then you pay tax, earnings before tax minus tax, will get net income. This net income is distributed to preference shareholders first, preference shareholder dividend and the common shareholders next. Once you pay dividend to the preference shareholders, the residual amount, next amount will be paid to the common shareholders. See, the preference shareholders and common shareholders are sharing the after-tax profit. So there is no tax benefit here, but having bonds here, we paid interest and after paying interest, whatever the profit comes that is subject to tax issue. So you will have some kind of tax saving having some debt capital here. But on the equity capital you don't have any tax savings because equity capital uh, dividend is paid uh, from the net profits. And as you know that uh, dividend is fixed to the preference shareholders but they do not have any voting rights. These shares, once issued, will have a secondary market from the day once the shares are listed in a stock exchange. So the sellers and buyers meet in a place, we call it as public market or stock market, wherein the trade takes place. The trade between this uh, buyer and seller is not regulated by anyone else, but there will be a regulatory agency to provide the market, but the price is not fixed by anyone else. It is purely based on supply and demand. Some stock markets are very organized um, and they have passed some regulations for the purchase and sale of the shares. We call them as over the, over the counter market. Over the counter market. Over the counter markets are well organized uh, markets for the exchanges of various securities in a secondary market like you can see uh, New York Stock Exchange where financial instruments are traded with a, in an organized manner. So stock markets provide a, a medium uh, to introduce the buyers to the sellers, sellers to the buyers to, to negotiate the prices about the price of the uh, various securities which is also known as OTC over the counter market but sometimes you may have kind of you know um, dealer driven markets wherein the dealers enter into uh, the market and they acquire the shares of some medium or small enterprises and they create a market it's called dealer driven market so when the prices of these shares based on purely demand and uh, you know the supply but if at all some important information is released to public, so obviously public will have a kind of, the potential investors will have a kind of illegal advantage of knowing some kind of information. Whether this information should be made available to public or not, that depends upon the efficient market hypothesis. So we'll have lots of, lots of, you know, existing shareholders existing investors and there are potential investors so all of them want to maximize the profits by actively competing with each other 
but as you know the future is uncertain so whether you take a certain decision the decision is going to help you out or not that depends upon the information which is freely available to all the participants if the information freely available or no you need to get only just historical information based on this the um, efficient market hypothesis classifies the markets into strong semi strong and weak a market is said, said to be in strong form if all public and private information both are available therefore what happens is here uh, the investors can get some kind of illegal advantage here because even private information is also available whereas semi strong means only public information publicly available information is available means what it goes into the media etc so as long as you are active in the market and uh, you have a kind of your own investigation so you just get the information which is publicly available which is legally available and take a decision so it is just you know um, uh, only the information which is available to everyone but you need to get you know update yourself to get the information the current information which is called semi strong form a weak form uh, efficient market hypothesis means you don't have any information just you will only see the historical information like last year what was the you know the um, uh, position of a company in a particular period like seasonal industry or government policies or economy based on that what was the share price of this company in the prior years so based on the past price movements or historical information you take a decision it is not based on the some kind of you know private information at all that's the reason why we call it as weak form efficient market hypothesis hypothesis so here there is no choice that to get a you know a kind of illegal advantage from the market because it is purely based on historical information so you will study on the past history and all of the company based on that you take a decision such a form of, of market is called as weak form efficient market hypothesis now we understand that what is a strong form or semi strong form and weak form of efficient market hypothesis in addition to this we can even see that what rating the company holds most of the corporates get um, rated by uh, eminent rating companies in the world like uh, standard and poor moody's fitch crisel etc so these uh, uh, rating companies investigate various issues of our corporates and give a rating mostly the rating is based on the probability of the default of a company whether this company whether this company um under any circumstances is going to become default default means bankrupt so when a company becomes a uh, uh, probability of you know becoming default so obviously and the company is not in a position to pay its obligations on time so the rating agencies first of all they check that what is the company's financial position then to 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 know this they see the quality of the balance sheet whether the balance sheet items presented are realistic or not what is the financial current financial position of a company what is the you know the value of the fixed assets it is just only historical value or even in the present we have these values exist so based on this the rating companies come to a conclusion that this company is going to be strong there is no question that the company will become default or there are chances that the company going to become default default in a sense become bankrupt in near future based on this the rating companies give some kind of rating and the symbols used by these rating companies represent whether the company is going or uh, is a strong company a weak or you know uh, like a very aggressive and uh, risky company like highest grade credit 
is given by Moody's with the triple A letters. Pitch triple A, S&P triple A. Very high grade, AA1, AA plus, AA plus. High grade credit, A1, A1, A plus, A plus. Good credit rating begins with the letter B. A speculative companies which you know, um, you know accept some risk to uh, give more returns to the investors, but it is risky. Uh, begins with a, a B, and very speculative B two, B three, B plus, B minus, and very junk bonds, junk investments, junk shares, junk companies with a default risk. There is a possibility that the risk is there. Will begin a letter with a C and D. So seeing this, we can investors can take a decision that where to invest, where not to invest. This is the end of the session on financial markets. Hope you understand and see you in the next session. Till then, have a good time.